Right, good morning everybody and welcome back to another episode of Two Guys, One Van and today we're throwing down a little bit of a review video. Um, this time we're reviewing not a bike, we're reviewing parts, uh, a part in particular and this is it. Right, this is my on one oval chain ring. This is the first time I'm running an oval and uh, I'm going to be giving a bit of a long-term review. So this video is going to be made over the course of the next couple of weeks. I've had this on the bike for about a week now. Um, a little bit reserved to say anything currently because I'm wanting to formulate uh, out what is actually nice about this versus what is confirmation bias and then try and filter out what I dislike. So we're going to be dropping this video over the next few weeks uh, or at least producing this video over the next few weeks and then I'll let you know what I think of this chain ring. So just straight up off the bat, let's just get into this. I have this, uh, it's a 34 tooth oval chain ring. Um, and I've got this paired, uh, it's a one-up components chain ring. Uh, let me just spin this around so you can have a look at the wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Okay, and I've got this paired up with the Sunrace um, 10 speed cassette 1142. Uh, and I find that works relatively well for where we are. Um, then running gear is obviously my uh, 600 year old um, XD cranks uh, paired with an X7 SRAM normal, it's a normal 10 speed cassette, I mean derailleur um, and then I think I have an X7, yep an S X7 clicker. So that's the system that I'm running um, and now I'm on the third highest over there. So I'm just going to spin this and you can just watch the that's the setup. Oh yeah, I'm running on my production Privy Shan. Sorry, I've got that setup on my hardtail at the moment. Um, the old, uh, the old hardtail. Right. So that's how it's set up, uh, and I will be obviously talking a little bit about this as time goes on. But until then, let's, uh, yeah, cut this into the next segment. Okay, converting to one bar is dead simple. So you take off all of your chain rings and your derailleur toss them in a bin. That'll save you around about half a kilo. Put on a narrow wide, if you want to, a chain guide, and you're A for away. It is just that simple. If you have a long cage or a medium cage derailleur with a clutch, bang on it. Perfect. If you don't, just get a really good chain guide and you'll also bang on it. No mess, no fuss. With all the people in the way. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to get up those stairs. I'm going to have to just carry it up. Pretty. Tag. Schönen Tag noch. Okay. So, wasn't able to run the stairs. Normally there's a little chute up the right hand side you can hit. But this is a, not the most technical climb in the world. But it's fairly steep and it's littered with bits of rock, roots, little bits on the side of the trail that are cambered that you have to use when we start this long push up here around the corner. This is where this oval chain ring is uh, supposed to really do its thing. It's supposed to, in theory, even out the pedal stroke, enable you to keep a more even distribution of power around your pedal stroke so in those two little dead spots that you have between your left leg and your right leg taking over the power stroke um, you're supposed to theoretically have a, a dip in power and this chain ring pulls additional chain over the chain ring 
during that portion of your power stroke or lack thereof power stroke um, yeah so let's go everything so far is nice and neat you don't have that vibe going on I've been running this training now for two three three weeks I think maybe a bit longer um, done a couple of small rides on it done a massive hundred kilometer session on the trainer and I've also done an all-day epic so uh, I've got a fair amount of rides under my belt on it and to be honest I'm still having a little bit of difficulty filtering out what exactly is confirmation bias and what isn't um, and the reason I say that is because it just seems to be wherever it's supposed to be better it is better uh. okay so the last little addition to this video that I'm going to be adding in even though this isn't at the end of the video but you know what I mean is uh, adjusting your clutch on your type 2 derailleur this doesn't work on a type 2.1 or 2.2 derailleur definitely works on a type 2 and this is how it goes right so here it is x9 type 2 derailleur and then here on the join where it says type 2 derailleur you'll have a little plastic cover now you gouge that little plastic cover out and then you end up with this rather massive torx bolt don't worry if you don't have a torx bolt this size it also takes an eight millimeter allen key it kind of fits in there a little bit loose but it does the job and then you give that a little bit of a squidge and that tightens up your clutch if your clutches are a little bit loose it might be a little bit sticky in the beginning until your clutch settles into its new home but that definitely works in helping you tighten up your clutch on type 2 derailleur where do we stand with this oval well i find it easier with the oval chain ring to stay on top of the gear there's kind of like this sweet spot cadence wise where turning the cranks over and staying on top of the gear just becomes really easy or easier significantly and then the further you get away from that sweet spot cadence wise you have kind of like diminished returns on both sides faster and slower um, but it really helps um, both when you're just chugging along on a flat as well as when you're on a climb I find myself feeling like shifting down a gear or to an easier gear on a climb less so I'm more happy in my subconscious just to find that sweet spot cadence wise and sit in that gear, um, which really helps. What I've found as well over the last little bit, we've done two big rides um, on it. And what I've found is that I seem to be less tired. Like my legs just seem to find it easier to pull the chain over the chain ring. Um, and that means I can, I can kind of like just keep trucking a lot easier if that makes any sense and that that to me is quite a positive um, the other is I haven't done any massive technical climbs but the climbs that I have done um, have been kind of steep kind of rooty and rocky where you have to like hop over little like kind of slick root lips and that kind of thing and I find that more even distribution of power really handy there I don't feel like um, my back wheel is fighting for traction in that dead spot in the pedal stroke uh, when we were doing the all-day epic, we did also do a bit of a climb over um, some snow that turned to ice patches every now and again, and I found it relatively easy even then to maintain forward momentum and traction. Right. To my uh, South African audience, subscribe to the channel and you could win this can of beer. Sure. May not seem like a good prize roundabout now. Give it a week though. You guys will be killing me for this beer. So over the years I've um I've used quite a few different brands for, for narrow wide chain rings. Black Spire, Race Face, this is an E13. I've got a one-up components or an on one. I can't even remember. Um oval on the hardtail, and I've got a race face on my enduro. And to be honest though, I haven't noticed a difference at all 
between the different brands when it comes to both longevity as well as chain retention. You can see on this one, this one was, um, you can see the abuse that this one has taken. It's missing like two teeth over there. Um, this one got hammered, absolutely hammered. And it still kept trucking. When I took this off, obviously I took it off for wear. Um, but it definitely wasn't because it was dropping chain. This one actually isn't a narrow wide at all. It's a single speed chain ring. Although I was using it um, on my uh, GT Force. Um, and I had a really good, um, it was a Shaman Drake chain guide. One of those full chain guides. I'll put a picture of something similar up in the screen so you can have a look at it. And with that chain, gu chain guide, I was able to run just a straight up uh, long tooth uh, single speed chain ring. Never dropped a single chain with it. Right, so out of all of the chain rings that I've used, let me just go through this quickly. This Black Spire was probably my favorite. And it wasn't my favorite because it held chain very well. Um, it held chain perfectly well. But if you have a look, it's got um, built-in spaces. And then uh, it's actually threaded, each of these rings. So you can use just the um, male bolt from your, uh, your sex bolt and uh, hold this on. So you don't need those, um, the little back end. And it spaces automatically, which on a triple chain ring gives you a much better chain line. And then the next favorite I'll have to say will be the on one or one up, whichever one is currently on my hardtail, because that one came with some spaces where you're able to use them to index your chain guard to get it a little bit more centered. It also, it also um, enables you to use your normal chain ring bolts that came off your bike originally, so you don't have to buy a set of the smaller chain ring bolts. And I really like that. I like that a lot. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to find this one at a good price again. Um, I'm not sure why. It, uh, it just became difficult to find at a good price. Of course, you don't need to run a chain guide when you're running a narrow wide. It's not 100% necessary. Obviously, it is a lot safer. Um, you tend to drop a lot less chain naturally, hence the chain guide. And you can run one of the larger ones like I'm showing on the screen now or um, like I'm running on my Enduro, just a small little chain catcher, uh, which is much lighter and cheaper to purchase. To be fair though, I really will ship that. And if somebody wins it that's not a South African, I'll ship it to them too. Then buy another one and then find a South African to ship that one too. Because I am a benevolent God. Right, so let's just, for argument's sake, say that all of this is confirmation bias. Wouldn't it be worth very little to almost no money when you replace your chain ring to jump to an oval? Isn't, isn't that psychological advantage that you get, even if it is confirmation bias, worth next to nothing? Like I always find the proof of the pudding is when I sit down to order a new part. Like when I look at the internet and I find what I need and I'm like, okay, I need to purchase this. Do I repurchase the same item or do I look for something else? And at the moment, I don't think I'll look for something else. I think I'll just click buy again. I think for all, or at least the near future, when it comes time to replace chain rings, I'm just gonna jump straight back onto the oval again. I don't really see a point in going back. And don't forget guys, you're only the first week into not being able to buy beer. And next week, next week, I might give away a pack of ciggies.